Greetings, this is Time Rider with a little early week sport. You know, in my life I've owned over 40 cars, all American makes and one Volkswagen. I had my best luck and found that cars from General Motors suited me best. Now don't go blowing up my comments section about how much better Ford and Dodge products are. That just hasn't been my experience and I don't fault those and know some who've had different experiences than I have. Anyway, a while back, when George Hodges and I first connected, he sent me some castings. Included among them was this sick little Hot Wheels Corvette with redline wheels. Uh, they called it the Flying Colors version, and of course, they covered it with all kinds of superfluous tampos that actually look like excrement, in my opinion. So, no loss here. I've only been doing this about a year. In that time, the hobby has seemed to turn more and more to customs. There seems to be a question as to what place basic restorations or simple resto mods play in the hobby. Too easy? Hmm, well, I think simple means that your margin of error is much smaller. Every flaw becomes a pimple on the end of a teenage girl's nose. It becomes all you see. Like that teenage girl, I don't want to go to the sock hop with a great big old pimple on my nose. I've always wanted a Corvette, the icon of American muscle. Nothing fancy, just a plain Corvette, which is a damn good looking car no matter how you slice it. So stick around. So I took a closer look at the photos I took of this thing, and you know, uh, contrary to what I said in my intro, it doesn't have red lines, it just has a black wheel, and this is what it uh, looked like in much better condition. I found this on the internet. These are not particularly uncommon. Uh, they can be had for as little as $3 anywhere on up, depending on what condition they're in. And uh, it was also available in many, many other variations, as were most Hot Wheels that were made. But uh, anyway, let's get on to uh, what I'm going to do with this thing today. So you can see here that the, uh, the casting is pretty corroded top and bottom. This is a, uh, a Hong Kong version. It's in pretty bad shape. There's a lot of corrosion on this. Um, I don't have one of those center punches. So what I did is I took my uh, tack life tool and I ground a, a depression in the middle of the rivet to help keep my drill centered. And it, it worked really well. I probably ought to have a punch, but I just haven't done that many Hot Wheels. So uh, I just make do, that's what I do. I did so much with so little for so long I can do anything with nothing. Um, yeah, the inside. Whew, that sucker was uh, a mud bath. And of course, there's those wonderful tampos. And you can see, like I said, this is pretty corroded. So, uh, say goodbye to the tampos. Goodbye, tampos. I'm all right, let's get past that. Uh, once I got it out of there, of course, it was covered with uh, corrosion and dried this and dried that. So, of course, we got to take the wire wheel at it. You know, the original Corvette was created for the Motorama Car Show in New York City. Uh, that was 1953. This casting didn't have a lot of detail, but there was some in the grill, so I wanted to make sure I cleaned it up really well. But anyway, as I understand it, uh, after the car show, there was enough interest that there were 300 hand-built Corvettes in 1953. They were all polo white convertibles. I get some steel wool after this. This is going to be a, a, a really interesting casting to do. There was a lot of flashing around the window openings, so I took a file to those. You know, like I said, 
the pimple on the uh, teenage girl's nose. You know, I mean, if I'm going to do this, I, I really want to put my best foot forward. But then Marty says, too, no restoration is perfect. And there, that's, that's a great truth. But that doesn't mean you can't shoot for it. So I don't I don't know what these things on the back are. George told me it has something to do with a special edition, but I'm a equal opportunity destructor. So all you Hot Wheels guys, sorry they gotta go. There have been eight generations of Corvette. This is a, a C3. This is generation three. Fiberglass body. Came with either a small or a big block. So once I got it all down to the chrome, so to speak, it was time to give it a good look-see. And you can see that it is really nicked. And this right rear, man, this is a hot mess. That thing is corroded uh, really, really bad. And there's nicks everywhere. Yeah, there, and it, of course the corrosion slipped down onto that back quarter. That back looks good though, missing all that crap. We're gonna have some fun here. A whole lot of fun to be had right here. The chassis, of course, was uh, in about the same state. Corroded top, corroded bottom, and I don't need any of this crap. I'm putting my own wheels on it. it wasn't until 1963 that they started calling them Stingrays. 63 is also the only year that the rear window had a split. I need to clean this channel out because I'm going to run uh, I'm going to run an axle to replace these Hot Wheels. So they're coming off. But first, 50% crud cutter, 50% water. You can use lime away, whatever. I live out in the sticks. Crud cutter was what they had. And then once I got it out of there, of course, I want to take a look at how it looks all together. Those side pieces, though, I don't remember the original Corvette having any kind of a casting line running through the middle of them, so uh, that's got to go. And I remember what it was. It was there. It was on the car. It was a chrome piece. It was a really nice accent piece, because these cars, I don't care what year you pick, they were beautiful every year. And then uh, file that channel out. Third generations like this one were patterned after the Mako Shark 2 concept car. So there it is. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to throw a, an axle sleeve there in the front and rear. I tacked them into place with Bondix and then I'm going to, I'm using Bondix here too. This car is done if, if. I've found that the Bondix doesn't hold real well, so if it doesn't, I'll have to take it apart and use uh, super glue and baking soda. But I got myself some junkyard wheels for when I do these spin arounds. Uh, this thing's uh, about ready for me to try to do body work and paint. I think it's a beautiful casting. Um, it has a lot of pluses to it. A lot of castings are a little too wide for the scale. I don't think this one is. I think that this is proportionally uh, very well done. I painted the car with white duplicolor, and I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, there was still quite a bit of pitting that was visible in this back quarter and a couple of big nicks on the roof. Otherwise, the primer actually did a, a pretty good job of filling in most of the imperfections, which is one of the reasons I use it, of course. Um, this is glazing and spot putty, which is actually an automotive product that you use... Uh, either for very small imperfections or on top of body filler. And then uh, finished off uh, sanding it smooth and painted it all over again, uh, at least that corner, uh, hoping for the best, of course. Now, I kind of debated what color to paint this thing. I mean, there's a lot of obvious colors, red, yellow, you know. Um, but I decided on something different. And what I'm doing here is I'm putting down a base coat of uh, just Tamiya silver, nothing special silver. 
I'm not going to be using a translucent paint, uh, but I am going to be using uh, a pearl. Must have run out of silver. Anyway, what I did was I took Createx Pearl Green and mixed in a little bit of Createx Pearl Black because um, what I wanted to do was darken the green a little bit. It, you know, I wanted green, not, you know, magically delicious green. So uh, I got a woolly booger while I was painting. Uh, so that's why I keep a Q-tip handy that's soaked in uh, whatever reducer I'm using. But I basically just cleaned the paint off completely and then just almost started over right there. And since I'm just using paint reducer, as long as I don't have gobs of it, I can just start painting it again right away. And once I got the paint done, of course, I wanted to do the detailing on what few details this casting had. Uh, it didn't really have door handles and, of course, Corvettes have hidden headlights, so... Uh, you know, you don't need to paint those. I'm fairly certain those little bumpers should have had black on them. But I was just afraid if I painted them black that you wouldn't be able to see them. These are green light wheels. Um, a GM set. So this is what actually came on uh, the Corvette from the factory. At least it was one of the options. But as with most chrome things, they were almost like two chrome uh, that you lose the detail of it in the chrome. So what I do then is I just paint them with tire wash and then take a Q-tip and sop up as much of the wet paint as I can and typically enough of it will remain in the details of the wheel to give it some definition. And then these taillights, what I did is I just painted those insets silver and I let them dry and this is translucent red paint I'm dropping in there. So I couldn't resist showing you what this looked like at the beginning because I think you'll find the end result to be quite dramatic comparatively. Uh, it was a fun casting to do. I look forward in the next year uh, to expanding what I do to castings. But without further ado, uh, let me show you how this wound out. So there you have it. The uh, Hot Wheels flying colors, at least my version of it. And if you look closely, you can see the pimple on the end of my nose. I probably should have whacked that roof one time with something, but I didn't notice until I was all done that it looks like maybe the car had gotten stepped on. So Marty comes back to haunt me and tells me that no restoration is perfect and by God, he turns out to be right. But I think that the the uh, Corvette turned out beautifully. I do like the color. It's probably not a factory color or something that you'd uh, see on the road a lot, but it's a pretty car. I'm glad to put it on my shelf. Be an episode of The Bench after this, so stick around if you like that kind of thing. And uh, that's it. This is Time Rider. And I'll leave the light on for you. So does anybody besides me have a wet pack in their shop? Well, I do, and I never suck anything wet up with it, but I turned it on the other day and I thought something had died inside of it. So I cleaned it out really well, and uh, I don't know if you've ever seen anybody do this. It's just a little, uh, one of, what do they call it, a life hack? So I strap this around the inlet, and then I drop to the bottom. You have to do that part. And then I strap it around the inlet, uh, it's just one of those uh, Christmas trees. Pick whatever flavor you like. And then I, uh, so it doesn't fly around in there, I tape it to uh, the side of the wet back. And then maybe in a week or two, I'll go in and pull it out a little more and a little more. It doesn't overwhelm the shop. It just gives it a cleaner smell. And I uh, got an English guitar guy showed me how to do this. He said I'm supposed to use a G-string, but apparently... My idea of a G, uh, uh, my idea of a G string is different than his, and this is, as Marty would say, the fiddly part. If I had known it was going to be eight E week, I would have made sure I had this done this week. But I'm working on it. We'll see. Maybe later. So I use them um, a lot of wheels, and I ordered this set of wheels. And I'm not trying to pan anybody's product here or anything, because I'm sure if I 
got a hold of the guy, he'd make things right with me, but it's almost hardly not worth it. But here's the deal. This is more just, you know, be careful. The axle that comes with these is kind of a little knurled affair, unlike like green lights and others which are smooth. And I understand why they did it. It's supposed to hold the axle inside of the wheel, which is all fine and well, uh, you know, but when you get a wheel, usually the first thing you do is try it out. And I tried to pull the axle back out and this is what happened to the wheel. And uh, so just be careful if you have that kind of axle. If you have spare axles, I wouldn't even use those. And last, I've kind of been working on this deal. Uh, I'm working on a gasser with a hauler, and I'm making the hauler out of a 57 Chevy uh, matchbox that I had. And uh, the gasser I'm just making out of styrene. I still have some things I want to do to this. I'm not 100% happy with it, but I'm headed in the direction I want to be headed in. So uh, I'll continue to work on that. It's kind of one of my long-term projects. And last, but certainly not least, I want to recognize all the builders who are going to participate in the Breast Cancer Awareness Paint It Pink Challenge. Uh, we're up to 33 people. Uh, the other two blind mice and I, we've been talking, we might make something a little more permanent on this, uh, but we really haven't put anything together just quite yet. So anyway, share if you like, uh, thumb up, thumb down, don't matter to me, comment below, please be respectful. Hope to see you at the next video.